It's generally assumed that when someone is hung, they died by having their neck broken. The official terminology for such a death is called the hangman's fracture. At the end of the drop, the second cervical vertebrae, or C2, is fractured by the weight of the body and the tightening of the knot. This fracture separates the C2 vertebrae from the C3 vertebrae, causing the spinal cord to snap in the process, resulting in instant death. Death by the hangman's fracture is a quick and humane way to die from hanging, and in a perfect world it would work every time. Unfortunately, death by the hangman's fracture was fairly uncommon in most hangings. In a study published in Forensic Science International, autopsies were performed on 34 individuals who were executed by hanging. Of the 34, only 3 died from the hangman's fracture, while the remaining 31 were not so lucky. If you're looking for a humane way to die, hanging is not one of them. There's multiple variables that determine a quick, clean death, and most of them are not in your favor. It's the early 19th century. At such and such time and place, you allegedly committed a murder. You claimed you were innocent, however, your lawyer did a shoddy job and you were found guilty. Your sentence? Death by the gallows. It's the day of your execution. The crowd is boisterous for your death, the noose is placed around your neck, a bag over your head, the executioner pulls the lever, and pause. Here's what will determine whether you die quick and painlessly or slow and excruciating. The drop height, length of rope, and placement of the knot. First, the drop height. The height determined to drop the condemned was a tricky one. If the height was too high, you'd risk decapitating the individual, which didn't do well for PR. And if it was too short, the hanging would take too long, which was also bad for PR. Ideally, when dropped from the appropriate height, the weight of the body broke the neck. But what would happen if the height wasn't high enough? The force from the drop wouldn't be strong enough to snap the vertebrae. However, it would be enough to crush, rupture, and tear arteries in your neck, specifically your carotid arteries, which supply blood to the brain. Tearing of blood vessels results in internal bleeding in the neck, and because the noose obstructs blood to drain downward, the face and neck would become engorged with fluid, so much that the eyes would bulge and tongue stick out of the mouth. This is why the heads were often covered to hide the grotesque process. Though the individual would likely lose consciousness within seconds from blood loss, they're alive to feel the acute force and rupture of blood vessels from the drop, which would be extremely painful. Next, the rope length. The drop height may be sufficient to cause the hangman's fracture, but if the rope length is too long or too short, the height won't matter. Too long means you'll make contact with the ground, breaking your ankles, getting untied, refit, and dropped again. If it's too short, it will lessen the force placed on the vertebrae when dropped and may not rupture blood vessels, meaning you'll die through strangulation by compression of the airway. Strangulation causes the face to turn blue from lack of oxygen and produces petechiae, or small blood marks on the face and eyes caused by bursting capillaries. Death by strangulation typically occurred after 4-5 to five minutes. However, death wasn't official until the heart stopped beating, which would continue minutes after death. So it was common to keep the person hanged for up to an hour afterward, Finally, the most important variable in hanging, the placement of the noose. If the noose is placed in the right position, even with a moderate height, you can guarantee an instant death. Traditionally, nooses were placed in two positions, with the knot either under the ear, called the subarial knot, or behind the head, called the occipital knot. Both of these positions were inconsistent in causing instant death, and often caused the individual to die by strangulation or sometimes decapitation. Surprisingly, the best position to place the knot was under the chin, known as the submental knot. This placement is the most effective because at the end of the drop, the knot forces the individual's head to hyperextend backward, placing a strong compressive force from the hyperextension and weight of the body on the vertebrae, causing it to break. The same fatal injury happens when a driver's chin hits the steering wheel in a high-speed collision. The impact compresses the vertebrae, thereby fracturing it and snapping the spinal cord. In 1913, British anthropologist Frederick Wood Jones published work on his findings that indicated fatal cervical fractures occur best with the long drop and placement of the submental knot, which later became standard practice in Britain. So yeah, there's the science of the gallows. Not the most humane way to die after all. Also, since it's late October and this is a grotesque topic, this technically counts as a Halloween episode, so here's a pumpkin. Thanks for watching and have a happy Halloween.